Hi and good morning. Uh, welcome to South Nutfield. We're today I'm in the garden because I want to make a dessert for you. And uh, I've got a little bit of rhubarb left, so I'm going to take the rhubarb out and take it in and make a rhubarb crumble. Everybody's favourite, with a little bit of custard as well. So let me get the rhubarb first. Let's find, let's dig deep. Just, yeah. Look at that rhubarb, beautiful rhubarb. Pink, ready to use. Oh, I'm going to need about a kilo of it, so about four or five good sticks of rhubarb. We've used quite a lot of it already, so um, I've got to find, look for some bigger ones. Here's one here. Right, I'm going to go in the kitchen and see you later. Well, I'm back in the kitchen and I want to go through all the ingredients and show you what I've got to cook with today. So let me talk you through it. I've got this delicious rhubarb, about 500 grams from the, uh, 500, half a kilo, 500 grams from the from the garden beautiful pink and green as well now the other ingredients we're going to need are 200 grams of flour some uh, mixed muesli with some uh, extra fruit put in it about 100 uh, grams of butter softened slightly softened 80 grams of soft brown sugar that's beautiful and we also have a little bit of um, ground ginger which I'm going to use in the uh, rhubarb and some cinnamon for the topping half a lemon a little bit of honey and some vanilla bean now that is for the crumble mix now later on I'm going to make custard and for the custard you're going to need some milk now I use semi skim milk with some single cream so I do recommend full fat milk or semi skin with cream. For egg yolks and the egg whites are in the fridge so I can make some meringues later. Two teaspoons of corn flour and about 60 grams of white caster sugar. First thing we're going to do is chop the uh, rhubarb. Now, about an inch, I would say, you need to have. You don't want it too small because uh, it's going to cook down in the uh, oven when we cook it. So about an inch. Don't be too uh, anal about the size of it. But just nicely chopped. We'll put that in the bowl like so. What I will do when I put this in there, I'm going to add the sugar and the lemon juice so it can uh, move around the rhubarb if you like. Now I've got my rhubarb cut, I'm going to add some sugar to the rhubarb, like so, the brown sugar. And I will also add a little bit of honey. You can use honey instead of uh, sugar, you don't have to use too much sugar. But we'll have a little squeeze of honey for sweetness. There we go. And we're going to add uh, about half a lemon to it. The juice of half a lemon rather than half a lemon. So we'll put those in the bowl. Then we'll just get them nicely mixed up. So they cover everything. Oh, again it's looking nice. That will be lovely and sweet now because it's quite a tart food is rhubarb you wouldn't want to eat it raw but it's wonderful in a crumble now I'm just gonna add the ginger to the mix which I forgot a little bit early on but it's um, it's a rhubarb and ginger I find it is a lovely flavor and the cinnamon is for the topping so we'll just get that a quick whiz round with a spoon get it round so Rhubarb and ginger was my dad's favourite. He loved rhubarb and ginger jam. I always remember that. I mean, it was crystallised ginger as well. Right, so we put that on one side and now we make the crumble. The first thing we do is add the, and this is a regular flour, just ordinary plain flour, 200 grams. And it goes. Then we add the butter, 
Now I like to use it slightly softened, not too hard and firm, otherwise it's a difficult job to do. Now then, I'm going to do this by hand, it's a lovely thing, it's just crumble it, make it nice and crumbly. It's a very simple thing to do, it's not difficult, you just mix the flour and the butter together, so not great big pieces of butter, so you want it a fine sort of bread crummy type thing. Now a word of caution, uh, be careful, don't wear rings when you're doing this because I once was wearing, making crumble in a hotel and when I'd finished I thought, ah where's that lovely Whitby jet ring I was wearing, and which is black luckily, and it was in the crumble, luckily I found it, so don't wear a ring with it. So we then add the, um, this is a, a muesli mix actually, which I, I, I love muesli. Gives it that little bit of crunch to it. So just add it to the mix. Add the cinnamon. There we go, all in there. We'll just give that a quick little stir together. That's lovely. And then we're just gonna pour it on top of there and we're ready to go in the oven. So, quite simple. Just pour your mix on top. There we go, cover it all if you can, which I will. And there we go, our apple crumble is almost ready for the oven. Rhubarb. Oh, sorry, rhubarb crumble. That's a mix. That was a deliberate mistake, guys. So we're going to now put this in the oven at 180 for about half an hour until it's golden brown. Now, everybody has stories about custard, normally from school, where custard was a, a little bit of a lottery. But I have to tell you, our school cook was a lady called Ethel Cox. Now, how do I remember that? That's 50, 55 years ago I was at school. Ethel Cox made the most wonderful custard what I've ever had. What I've ever had, that's very bad grammar. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we've got a pint of milk and cream. So it's semi skim milk with cream. If you haven't got cream, just use a full fat milk. I think you need to do that for here. So we're just going to pop this on here now. Now we don't want it on too high because I don't want this milk to boil. I just want it to scald if you like to get it nice and ready. So whilst the milk is heating, I'm going to put the egg yolks into the bowl here. There are four lovely fresh egg yolks in there. And to that I will add the sugar. Get them all out. All right, use that in a minute. Just ordinary plain caster sugar this time because it's a lot easier to, to mix together. And just mix the eggs with the sugar until they're nice and creamy and they've all got together, mixed well together. And I'm going to also add two large teaspoons of corn flour. Now, the corn flour is to stop it splitting, really, and to thicken it. It's what custard, if you look at custard powder, the major ingredient in custard powder is just corn flour with some yellow colouring, if you like. Now that's going to be going there together. Keep it whisk, whisk it nice and firm and strong. Now that's just egg yolks, sugar and corn flour and it'll be ready to have the um, scalded milk in just a minute. Can you see how it's nice and creamy now? Nice and no lumps, no nothing. Ready to go. Now the other thing, next thing to do is to add some vanilla bean paste. I, Unless you've got fresh vanilla, which is obviously the best uh, product you can get. But I, I like to use vanilla bean paste because you get those lovely black bits in it. So we'll just get some of this out. Pop it into the milk and cream, such. Depends on you and how much you like it and uh, whether you like a lot of vanilla or not. But um, I know it's an expensive product as well, so you've got to be sparing with it. But the bean paste is far better than this one here, which is the extract, which is, looks, tastes a little bit synthetic to me. But this bean paste is just absolutely wonderful. So I'll just put that in there. 
Just wait for this to warm up. That's nice, it's getting warm. You don't want it too hot when you add it to the egg yolks and the um, corn flour and sugar because it could curdle it and that's the last thing you want. So we want it nice and warm. Just a bit more than blood temper, temperature. We'll just turn up a bit for, for the time being. Now I set up. Now I know when I worked, when I first started work at the hospital, when I was a very young budding chef, we used to make huge, huge vats of custard. I mean huge, and we used to paddle it with a rowing, rowing, um, like a rowing boat. <laughs> the masses are, it's nice and warm now. I'm just gonna have a little bit of warmth in there. A little bit at a time then we just keep going keep whisking all the time you don't want it all in not too hot so we'll add that in now you see it's just starting to get ready in the on the base of the pan so we add all of that in like so Whisk it so you see it's not split, it's not it's not red, it's ready to go back in the pan, which we will do now. Back into your pan. Now this is this is the important bit. You must whisk this whilst you whilst it's heating and thickening. Because if you don't, you can often end up with a gloopy mess. Smelling nice now, I'll tell you the, the smell of vision would be nice. Ethel Cox would be absolutely delighted with this. And the way we're going to tell whether there's, you can tell whether there's any big resistance and whether it's thickening by using the whisk. And we're going to test it by putting the spoon in it, doing the spoon, the wooden spoon test. I want you to keep, keep it, keep it going. Don't stop whisking. Just starting to thicken now. Now, if you like it sweeter, you can have it a bit sweeter. If you like it thicker, you can have it a bit thicker. Just add a bit more corn flour. But it's starting to get ready. I can just feel some resistance coming now. Don't want to let it boil. You've got to cook that corn flour out. Still a bit thin. I'm going to swap to my wooden spoon now, so I can feel it. There you go, I can feel it getting thicker. And there it comes. And as I said, the test will be the, the spoon test in just a second. When it, can, you, can you see it now? Can you see it just coming up to the boil? The corn flour will stop it splitting. It should stop it splitting. Now that's thickening beautifully now. I can feel that with my spoon. Now can you see, just see it start to bubble. I'm going to take it off the heat now because I don't want to burn the bottom. But look, you can, you can feel, you can see that now. Can you see it? There's a gap in there. This is absolutely smelling beautifully. The perfect accompaniment for apple crumble. And once it's out of the oven, we'll put it together and I'll taste a bit. And now I'm going to take my rhubarb crumble out of the oven. It's been in for about 35, 36 minutes. Uh, and it's ready to go. You can see it's bubbling around the edges. I'm just going to take it over to the um, bowl, if you like. Just shut the oven, excuse me. Now. Let's have a bit of this with some of this beautiful custard that I made earlier on. Let's have a look. Get a nice big spoon out. And we'll try it. Taste test. Look at that. Plenty of crumble on it. Oh, look at that. Beautiful fruit. It's beautifully cooked. Smells an absolute treat. Oh, lovely chapel. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of my beautiful custard to it. 
Just pour it on like oh, so. Can see it? <laughs> can you see it? There we go. Oh. <laughs> my cameraman is salivating. I think my cameraman wants a little bit. I'm now going to try a bit and see whether it's up to Ethel Cox's standard. Oh, smells beautiful. Let's try it. Absolutely. And the ginger just makes it that much better. Oh. Mm. And the crunchy bits, absolutely wonderful. Right, I'm going to leave you to it now and hopefully see you next week. Stay safe. Be good.